Hello world, it's Amasi Sparks, and well, Cyberpunk 2077 finally launched. And to say that the launch was a disaster might as well be an understatement. And I know by now you must be wondering, where are the cool music videos that Mossy likes to make uh, for this game? You could tell probably that I've been excited for this game leading up to the launch, uh, but there's been nothing aside from the odd live stream covering it. And honestly, gotta say, the gameplay, although tremendously fun, uh, the gameplay loot addictive, the gameplay is just not up to par to be featuring in a video. And don't get me wrong, I have no problems at all making CD Projekt Red look bad by featuring the state of the game as it is. I mean, they're the ones that released the game in this state on console. I'm more concerned about the quality of the gameplay for my channel and for the videos. So I figure waiting until the game performs better for those videos is probably the best idea. Anyway, with that being said, we're going to get into the technical aspects of the game and if it's worth it or not on PS4 Pro and whether or not Sony was right to pull the game from the store. Okay, so first, let's start with the things that I really love about this game. The things that CDPR got right, in my opinion. First of all, the gunplay. I really enjoy the gunplay. For CDPR's first first-person shooter, I think it's quite good. I really enjoy the leveling up aspect to it. It grants a sense of progression and empowerment when you come back to enemies that you are having trouble with prior after you've leveled up and just completely destroy them. I really love that aspect to it. They nailed the sense of progression in the game. Secondly, the world. The world building. The city really is a marvel to behold. It's amazing. It really is beautiful even in the current state of the game on PlayStation 4 Pro. And next, the story. I truly am loving the story. The writing and especially the voice acting in this game are truly great. Next level. I really love the deep sort of philosophical concepts that the game covers regarding the human soul and what tampering with the human body too much with cybernetic implants can do to the soul. Uh, I love that aspect. But I won't get into too many story spoilers for obvious reasons. I'm assuming there are many players who haven't been able to play too far into the story yet, so we'll just leave that at that. And although there are many other things that I really do love about this game, uh, for instance how intricate the lore is, how well it pulls from its source material, the uh, original cyberpunk board game, uh, the music, the sound design, there are many other things in this game that are very good. Uh, we'll just move on to what everybody wants to hear about, and that's the technical issues. And whether or not Sony was right to pull the game from the store. So let's get into that stuff. Uh, I'll have some gameplay showing off some of the technical issues that I've run into, uh, and there are no shortage of them. So let's get into that. Alright, so this is just going to be a list of a few of the bugs that I've experienced, some of the most annoying ones. If I have footage for it, you'll see footage playing in the background. And first and foremost, the most annoying issue with this game on PlayStation 4 is crashes. This game consistently crashes. Uh, you can see in the first live stream that I ever posted, right at the beginning of the stream, I call it around an hour 45 minutes is when the game should crash and lo and behold an hour and 50 minutes later the game crashes mind you by now we found some settings that you can turn off to minimize this uh, so the game will actually run for a little bit longer uh, but regardless this is still a huge issue I probably have over 20 uh, crash reports if I go into my look at my crash reports on my PlayStation 4 this is that's not acceptable for the amount of time that I've been playing the game next one rather funny but still kind of annoying glitch uh, would be crashes would be accidents in vehicles 
Uh, I personally find the, just the normal driving around and the drifting around corners to be really fun, to be really responsive and fun. Uh, however, that is until you crash. The physics when you crash or hit an NPC can be very wonky. And I don't know about you, but it really is immersion breaking. When you hit an NPC, he gets lodged in your hood and then causes your entire car to do a fucking backflip. That that doesn't just that doesn't scream realism to me. So kind of a funny one, but also I thought I'd mention that. And another huge issue, probably right up there alongside the crashes, is horrible, horrible object popping in this game. Uh, sometimes the entire environment is low poly right before your eyes for sometimes up to what seems around 10 seconds uh, before the mechanical hard drive in, in the PlayStation 4s can catch up and load the data or stream the data. This is where you're seeing a lot of weird pictures of NPCs that legit look worse than PlayStation 1 NPC character models. These are supposed to be low poly models only to be viewed by the player at a very far distance away. It saves on resources in the game and also it's slightly realistic as in real life you can't make out very fine features on objects that are very far away. It really does seem that the HDD, like the hard disk drive in the PlayStation 4 and Pro consoles, it just is not powerful enough. It cannot stream enough data fast enough to keep up with this game. Ah, side note, I believe I found this black wall the Netrunners are always referring to. Although, I, I was under the belief that it only existed in cyberspace. Uh, now I'll quickly go into some of the less major, uh, but still kind of immersion-breaking bugs. First of all, there are a lot of the animation issues uh, with objects and characters interacting with objects. Sometimes the object will just be completely invisible, other times It'll be hovering next to them, seemingly interacting with another completely different animation that's invisible as well. Uh, or it'll just be stuck frozen in the air. Or if in this instance, as you can see, uh, in a cutscene where V smokes a cigarette, the cigarette did not disappear and it was stuck in my hand for the rest of the gameplay until I reloaded the save. Small issues like literally dying for no reason. You just die for no reason sometimes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that is really annoying. Uh, the any settings, like your user settings, um, so uh, all the game settings basically, any of the settings you have turned off for the graphics, any of the uh, audio settings, your controller settings, a lot of the time when the game crashes, these settings are reset and you have to go back in and basically recalibrate them to how you like them. Like, almost every time the game crashes, which is a hell of a lot. Another major thing, which I believe CDPR has come out and said is actually a bug, is the police AI system, or lack therefore of. Uh, the wanted level system in the game is really bad. As you can see, like the police just instantly spawn in, like feet behind you. Uh, and when you get up to, I'd say, three and above for your wanted level, for the stars, you just have no chance. You turn around, and you're dead, basically. Uh, it really just seems like they up the difficulty, ex like, extremely high, uh, in order to kind of hide the fact that the wanted system is so lacking in features. Um, so yeah, there's that one, too, a lot of people complaining about. Same goes for, like, the crowd and the pedestrian AI. Uh, apparently they were supposed to have daily routines that were programmed in, which is just nowhere in the final release. And finally, one major issue with the gunplay is if you are in a situation where you've jumped out of a speeding car, uh, where the city is in a state of trying to load itself in front of you, you'll notice that the gunplay itself is actually affected. You can hear the sound effects for the gunshots, the impacts of the bullets, uh, they're very late, late by a couple seconds, uh, and even the graphics on the scope do not appear uh, until the environment is loaded around you. And this is a huge issue. Uh, this is directly interfering with the meat of the gameplay, in my opinion, and it's very annoying. Okay, that's, that's pretty much it for all the worst bugs, at least all the worst ones that I could think of. And with that being said, 
Now, let's get into the ugly part of this video, which is how CD Projekt Red dealt with this launch. So the way CDPR handled this release was definitely shady. It was definitely wrong. Concerns were first raised uh, by the big like review channels on YouTube, uh, which none of them were given console codes to review the console versions of the game. Even by the 9th of December, a day before the game was released, they still hadn't gotten console codes so they could review the console version of the game. Uh, this obviously raised a lot of red flags. Uh, There's a lot of people concerned about the state of the console games, and rightfully so. And as you're aware, by the time the gamers had already purchased the game and started playing, I mean, it was too late. CD Projekt Red seemingly intentionally hid the state of the game on consoles uh, in order to try and minimize the blowback and refund spree that would happen uh, if they released the, the state of the game, as it were. This is incredibly shady. They basically knew that the game was broken on console and as you can see from their own admission in a tweet, they knew, yet they released it anyway. Which is just, that's bad optics, man. That's not smart at all. Like, how did, how did you think it was going to go with the state that it's in, especially on base consoles? It's really not, it really was not a smart move, CDPR. Definitely not. So after that tweet went live, and I'm assuming what was thousands of uh, angry gamers flooded PSN for a refund, uh, Sony decided to one-up CDPR and basically just straight up pull the game from the PlayStation Store. I've never seen this before in my life. This is crazy. Like a, a development studio as big as CDPR and they have a flop like this that Sony li like literally has to rip it from the store. This is unprecedented. I've never seen this before. And as you can see, shortly after Sony pulled the game from the PlayStation Store, uh, CDPR came back in on Twitter with this post. All right, all right. So this is insane. But the, the question still remains. The, the main question of the video, is Cyberpunk 2077 worth it? In its current state, on either base consoles or the PlayStation Pro, no. No, it's not worth the money. It is, it is broken, it is not finished, uh, and it's painfully obvious that it, it, it's not finished and that it was rushed out. So 100% if you're on the fence about this game, I mean, you can't even buy it right now. So, I mean, Sony basically just answered that question for us. No, it's not worth the money. You can't even buy it on PSN right now. And next, was Sony right in pulling the game off the store? 100% absolutely. What are they to do? If they get flooded with thousands of refund requests because the game is not functioning properly, What's a guy to do? I mean, they gotta pull the game to stop the people from being pissed off. They gotta stop their customers from having a bad experience. Good on you, Sony, for kind of being pro-consumer uh, as far as this specific case goes. For sure, good call to pull it from the store. Uh, they definitely have to finish the game before they release it. I mean, come on, guys. That's... That's a bit much. Ah, and with all this negative stuff being said, with all the bugs and technical issues aside, is Cyberpunk 2077 good? Yes, without a doubt. If all of these bugs and the performance issues can be ironed out, this game is a masterpiece, hands down. I fucking love the game. So CDPR, not the devs in particular, I'm assuming from what we're hearing, this was rushed out and is no fault of the devs. You can clearly see that they've poured their hearts into this game over eight years, is it now? And then just for the game to be rushed out and released in this state, that's got to hurt, man, for the devs. So for anybody that's sending hate towards the devs specifically, 
just don't just just do not i mean eight years of work look what they've done look at the city like i said it, it's a marvel to behold so guys if by some crazy chance you do hear this stick with it this is indeed a masterpiece as long as everything is fixed and the performance issues are ironed out I'm pretty sure the launch will just be forgotten so long as CDPR holds up their end of the bargain and actually fixes the game. That's pretty much all I got on the launch of Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, the usual YouTube stuff. Uh, if you found this video informative, if it helped you in any way, please like the video and consider subbing to the channel. The Mossy Posse would be happy to have you. And the usual thing, a huge shout out to all of my channel members. You guys are greatly appreciated. I can't thank you enough.